everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Maddie Lullaby and today I'm going to be doing a how to avoid puppy scams video. So unfortunately I'm doing this video today because uh, me and Ryan were scammed, puppy scammed by a puppy scam artist. Okay, and it was sad. So the first part of this video is going to be just a little bit of backstory about what happened to Ryan and I. And then the second part of this video is things to look out for and how to avoid a puppy scam. So let's get into the backstory. If the lighting is changing like crazy, it's because it's Melbourne, by the way. It's just, it's Melbourne. So Ryan and I, on the 16th of October, such a long time ago now, on the 16th of October 2016, we decided that it would just be so much better if we had a puppy. We can walk it, like we walk all the time anyway. Like we just love to walk a dog, we'd love to cuddle a dog, we'd love to love a dog, we'd love to look after it. Um, we did our research, we looked up what sort of dogs would be the best ones for us and the two that came up was like, oh no it was three, um, it was a Labrador, a Golden Retriever, which I've already had so that's why I'm thinking it's two, um, and a Corgi. And we decided a corgi would be great because this is a small house and a bigger dog needs more food, more things, you know, um, more exercise. So we decided like all the corgis do need a lot of exercise. I think for me it's just mainly like um, food costs and stuff. Like if you get a small little dog, you don't need to spend as much money on food. And just with like our lifestyle and everything, like I think just a smaller dog to have in the house to like set up on the couch with us or whatever, um, just a small dog would be better. Anyway, another another backstory is that uh, Ryan and I are going to be moving into my parents' new house that they're currently building um, during the middle of next year so that we can save up some money. Um, it's actually a really good deal. Like we get the, we get like the first part of the downstairs area, we get like a little um, living space and a little like bedroom, ensuite, walk-in robe. So it's actually gonna be really sweet. And we're gonna be able to save a lot of money for like a house or something in the future. Anyway, let's fast forward again. So we needed, we basically needed to get my parents' permission for the dog, because otherwise why would we get the dog if my parents are gonna be like, oh no, we don't want dogs in our new house, you know? So they were like, okay, it's fine as long as you get it soon so that you can train it up and like it won't destroy the new house, like it won't pee all over it and stuff. Fast forward again, now they're invested in the dog so that doesn't matter anymore. Well, thank God because we still don't have a puppy. We have tried three times now to get a puppy and it just hasn't worked out yet. But anyway, I'm gonna be telling you guys about the very first time we tried to get the puppy. So we were very naive at the start. I think I've wised up a lot now and we're actually on a really good breeders list. So we're just waiting for her puppies to be born middle of next year. Moving along, I have emails from the puppy scam artist on the 17th of October they emailed us back so we were very desperate at the start we basically just searched like because we wanted a corgi we basically searched a corgi puppies and we did not realize before we wanted a corgi how the like, internet famous and popular they are like we had done our research and corgi just fits for us and realize how famous they were how many people want them at the moment and how few breeders there are in Australia um, and so there is a lot of opportunity for scammers to uh, really abuse that when there's not enough um, supply of a particular breed. So they basically emailed us back and they sent us like a whole lot of pictures. Um, I think cause Ryan and I were so excited, we didn't even realize that the pictures were really off. The one that tipped me off is that one of them was very young and that tipped me off because the ears were so small, like corgis have very big ears and in all the other pictures, all the other corgis had like big sticky up ears but one of them was just very young. I'm not sure what age she or he would have been. It looked a lot younger than the rest, so if you get sent a whole bunch of photos, try and see if they're the same ages and also see if they're in the same locations as all the other photos because these weren't. These were just like all over. I'm like, oh, they must have just like put the puppy on the porch and took a photo and then put the puppy like in the backyard and then took another photo. Like, no, that's not what they're gonna do. Like if they're gonna take photos, they're probably gonna do it all in the same spot. Um, but I didn't know that, I was just really excited. So yeah, that tipped me off and then, uh, what did I do? I googled puppy scams, I found this really good site that I'll uh, mention soon. And I also googled the guy's name and he came up for bank fraud and scams. So, you know, 
that's what really tipped me over the edge. And I'm like, I had to message Ryan at work. I'm like, Ryan, I think they're a scam. And we'd already like been messaging back and forth with this scammer. Um, luckily, no money had been sent yet, but the very next message he did send us was for us to send him money. Okay, so that's enough backstory. Basically, Ryan and I, we're going to wait until a puppy mid next year. Um, I think I said in a previous video that we're getting a puppy soon, but that ended up being a phantom pregnancy. Okay, guys, so this is the second part of the video now, and I'm going to go through all the tips. All right, so these are my tips to how to avoid a puppy scammer. Now, the first tip that I would suggest you do is obviously do your research about what sort of dog you want and then think how often do I see this dog walking around because we wanted a corgi but when we thought about it we haven't seen any corgis walking around Australia like they're pretty rare dogs at the moment they used to be very popular a couple of years ago but uh, right now they're not and you don't see a lot of them anywhere so because there's not a lot around scammers can use that to their advantage and put up fake ads for people desperately wanting that type of dog. My second tip to you is to be aware, and by clicking on this video and watching this, you are now aware that there are horrible people wanting to puppy scam you. <laughs> so having that in the back of your mind, I know that you guys are all gonna be very aware now and question what you're being sent and fed and the photos that you are receiving and if they, you know, you're just gonna be aware. So being aware is critical um, don't take things on face value, always question and be cautious. Especially if you're trying to fly a puppy interstate and you're not going to be able to see the parents or the breeder's house. My next tip to you guys would be to find a site that lists all the pedigree breeders in your area or your country. Um, the one for Australia that I have found my breeder off is Dogs Online. I'll link that below for all of you Australians. Once you find that website, I would go through all the breeders, um, have a look at their websites. I would also contact them, um, just message them saying, hey, do you have any puppies available or when is your next litter? Everyone that got back to me on the Dogs Online site was very lovely. I even had a few phone calls from them saying, oh no, I can't believe you've been scammed. Um, one lady in particular, she really wanted to see the email because apparently scammers have been using pictures of her puppies um, to scam other people with, so she was very concerned about it. So scamming is a very real thing, especially for corgis. If you like me and Ryan and you wanted a corgi, then um, be very careful because there are a lot of scammers out there right now. And I imagine for a lot of other breeds of dogs, there would be too. Now, one of the things that I did, which I think was actually pretty clever of me, was I Googled the guy's name who was scamming us. And it ended up coming up that he was on um, like a watchdog list because of bank fraud. So, uh, yes, <laughs> I don't know if I need to say any more than that. But basically, I think they were uh, wanted for fraud in Melbourne, but the person that was contacting me with the same name was now in Queensland. I mean, I don't even know if they are in Queensland or if they're hiding out in Melbourne, to be honest. Now, once I Googled that guy's name and found that he was a scammer, I immediately started to Google like puppy scams and I found this good website, Windal Farms website. Um, and it explains like what to look out for with puppy scams and everything. I found it very helpful So I will link it down below and you can read some of their tips But one of the tips that they suggested on their site was that puppies can't be delivered to your doorstep This may or may not be true depending on where you live Because when one of the breeders that is a legitimate breeder called me up She was the one who had her photo stolen by other scammers and she was very interested in the scammer when she called me up, she was asking about it, and she was like, what are some of the things that he said? What's uh, making you think that he's a scammer? And I told her all this stuff, and I said, one of the things is that he says that he can deliver the puppy to my doorstep, and I've looked online, and they've said that that's not possible. And she actually said that it is possible, and that they can arrange, like, a courier um, to, or, you know, like a pet courier. Someone who's gonna look after the animals properly can pick them up from the airport and bring them to your house. So that can actually be a thing. I'm not sure if that's just for interstate. Um, that probably wouldn't be for like different country or anything because of customs and I guess you'd have to sign registration papers and everything like that. So um, you just have to look it up in your area and see if that's like a real thing. Now, one of the other big tip offs for scammers is that they like to use Western Union banks. And I know that this isn't true for all people, and some people have Western Union banks and they're not scammers, so it's not all Western Union banks. But a lot of them do seem to use Western Union, 
and if they are using Western Union and they say you can only pay me via a bank deposit to a Western Union bank then you need to be really careful so if they're saying like if there's no other way to pay and they have a Western Union bank you should be um, very cautious so I can hear you all screaming through your laptop screens but Maddie these are all so subjective and I wouldn't know for sure if they were a scammer or not and I feel like you're right you wouldn't know so this very next tip is going to prove to you whether they are scamming you or not. I'm not going to take credit for this tip. I did find it on the website that I mentioned before, Windal Farms. Um, but this tip is just great, so I want to share it with you guys. So to make absolutely 100% sure that the puppy that you are trying to purchase from this scammer or breeder um, is actually legitimate is to get them to take a photo of the puppy with a piece of paper next to it in the same photo. I'll link a photo of Windale Farms example next to me um, saying your name and I reckon your phone number would be a good thing to add in as well. So get them to take a photo of your puppy with a piece of paper with your name and phone number on it. And you know, I reckon that if the scammer was really good at Photoshop, they could probably Photoshop this. They could just take this picture, for instance, cut off the text and put in, you know, your name and phone number. But I reckon if you get a front on picture like this, and then you get a profile picture with like the um, paper in a different spot, and then maybe a behind picture of the puppy with the paper again, and your name and phone number then there's no way that they would be able to photoshop this because it should all be in the same room it should all be the same dog from different angles with the same piece of paper and the same lettering on every angle so they shouldn't be able to photoshop that you should be very safe with that so if you ask this breeder or scammer to do that for you they should happily oblige if not uh, you just shouldn't deal with them basically because they are trying to take your money <laughs> So that's it guys. I really hope this video helped you and I hope that it saved you a lot of money <laughs> And that you didn't get um, scammed. Don't forget to give this video a big like if this helped you and subscribe if you'd like more from me I do new videos every Friday at the moment. So Friday is 10 a.m uh, Melbourne Australian time. I hope and wish you all the very best of luck for finding your little puppies in the future um, Hope you wish us luck with finding our little puppy in the future, too So I hope you all have a really good day, and I'll see you guys next Friday. Bye